Welcome to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-hosts, F.P. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. Hopefully, Vern Glenn will join us in just a bit. Uh, at each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And I thought this would be kind of fun. It's football in the movies. Good. Yeah, talk about film and uh, football. That's pretty good. Because movies weren't made in the uh, 1800s. That's um, right. Exactly. Right. So I, I, I knew that you'd be happy with uh, questions that at least started yeah. with uh, 1920. If you something. start saying the, in the silent film, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't remember any silent films that had sports, though. Unfortunately. Really? I don't remember any silent films. How's that? Other than oh, come silent on. movie by, uh, by uh, Mel Brooks. Birth of a Nation, which I haven't seen, but I know it's uh, very controversial. Uh, and then uh, what was the, uh, the Kid with uh, Jackie Coogan and uh, Charlie Chaplin. And, and it's funny, actually, you know, it's funny that we were just mentioning about how, you know, with, with uh, uh, business here, uh, Jackie Coogan, if you remember, he was Uncle Fester, right, on the Adams Family. And because his parents had mismanaged his account when he was little, they came out with the Coogan Law so that you'd have to set up bank accounts specifically for the kids. I don't know if you guys knew that. I thought that was kind of interesting. So they call it the Coogan account. In fact, my son, when he did some modeling and uh, a little bit of film, uh, we had to set up a separate account just, just for him. I wasn't going to touch it anyway, but you know. It didn't help for it. Britney Spears, but yes, the idea was good. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, that's true. Well, but the thing is, yeah, now that was different. I mean, she wasn't I mean, I was after she was uh, not, she was an adult, right? And things got kind of No, they, they, they took advantage of her when she was a kid. That's and true. They, well, you know what, though? They, but you, if mismanaging it is different than stealing the money, right? I mean, you can, you can put it all in crypto, as an example, and mismanage it versus uh, saying, hey, I'm going to buy myself a boat. All right. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown, F.P. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman here. All right, F.P., go ahead and start us off. Extensions. Right. We're talking extensions. And as of August 23rd, Tuesday, we're going to talk about Nick Saban. You might have heard this guy. One of the greatest college football coaches of all time. Maybe one of the greatest coaches of all time. But that's another debate. He got an extension through 2030, and it looks like he's getting $11.7 million a year that will pay him uh, through February of 2030. So, guys, he's one of the most winningest college coaches of all time, one of the most winningest colleges or coaches of all time. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, here, here's the issue. Here's one of the issues, I think. First of all, I would take the 0. 0.7. <laughs> than, I don't even need the 11.7 million. I take the 0. 0.7. But anyway, um, here, here's the interesting thing is with college football, you got to think that if you're in high school and you're a really good player, it's like, you know, success breeds success. Yeah. Where do you want to play? Right. You want to yeah. play for Nick Saban. You want to play for a big company. You don't. And it's, uh, it's funny because thinking about something like, uh, um, you know, just anyway, players who maybe quite aren't good enough, they might have, they might not have that choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah, well, I heard, I heard Urban Myers available. Yeah. <laughs> but he's actually going to be doing, I think, uh, an, uh, game day on Saturdays now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he's going to be doing a show. I could be wrong. It might be another show. It might be an Amazon show. But I'm looking at the contract details here, guys, and it looks like he's going to get postseason bonuses, 75000 for appearing in an SEC championship. So you can knock that one a couple times. Uh, 200000 for appearing in a New Year's Eve Six Bowl game. I don't think that's going to happen too often. Uh, 400000 for appearing in a national championship semifinals game, 600000 for appearing in a national championship game, and uh, 800000 for winning it. So he gets a couple more million if he wins the championship. Let's just put it that way. Alabama, by the way, is voted to be the favorite to win the national championship. <laughs> Whoa, it's huge yeah, I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very cool. Let's talk about another extension. Okay. That happened before the last show we had was LeBron James, and he got a huge, huge, huge contract. He got, um, let's see, a two-year, $97.1 million contract that pushed him to be the highest-earning NBA player of all time through NBA contract money. 
And yeah. FP, I guarantee with that contract, he will never win another title. I guarantee really? it. I okay. guarantee it. I Tell guarantee it. Well, is it because there's so much money going to him that they, they yeah they yeah they can't it. afford to have anyone else on that team now? I mean, their next biggest star is is other than Davis, who will be up for an extension pretty soon, um, yeah. is Westbrook, and he's a disaster. That's and then everybody else as. As Buddy Sotelo used to say, everyone else is synonymous with being anonymous. <laughs> Was that your favorite phrase? That came uh, no, my favorite fla- phrase is this guy isn't even a household name in his own house. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's you come up with good. those? You came up with those? Yes. Yes. Like <laughs> Let's put it this way, guys. Let's think about this from a business perspective. This is Sports Econ 101. What if like, you were high? to hire a salesperson that was an absolute ringer, right? You knew that he was going to bring tons of sales and he's going to make you so much money, but he was going to kill the rest of your team. Would you still bring him in? Because LeBron James being on the Lakers generates billions of dollars, just through Jersey sales, all the stuff, yeah. uh, brand recognition, you name it. It's LeBron James. He's one of the top three greatest basketball players of all time. Sure. It's just facts. So would you hire somebody like that to – really just you know make your brand pop but the rest of the personnel within your team suffer well i get i because there's a few things one do you look at you know how important it is for you to win a championship versus the money side of it like i don't care about winning a championship i just want a lot of bank that's one thing right how much extra it looks like Vern's going to join us here in a second how how much extra could you get for selling tickets you know, like in, in, the, in the Raptors. Mr. Vern Glenn, thanks for joining us. Morning, fellas. Hey, we're in second. Morning, we're in segment two. And we're talking about LeBron James' um, extension, getting 97 million. And FP brought up LeBron James. Out. LeBron James, y'all. Yep. Well, he'll, he'll, so, hey. well, he'll sell tickets. Well, okay, okay. And that's, that's what my point is. The retirement. How much more would the tickets go? Uh, I assume they, they pretty much sell out every time they play don't they at at staples center they're not going to i think as you know if they have another 24 win season they're not going to sell out it's crypto.com arena now by the way too come on yeah staples center's gone crypto.com crypto.com and that'll last about a couple of years just like park in san francisco go ahead exactly monster yeah monster park after that but yeah it's a very interesting discussion guys it's like would you pay uh X amount of money for just a superstar to bring in a lot of revenue for your team, but then your team kind of suffers in other aspects, right? So you're strong in one department, but everything else just kind of goes out the window. Uh, at the end of the day in sports, winning brings money. It's just what it is. But star power also brings a lot of money. I would say it's like one third of it. So one third is winning, one third is star power. The other third is your market, right? Whether they're interested in your sport. I think that's kind of how you break it down very simplified. But anyways, guys, let's get to the top three all-time most earning NBA players. Number one is LeBron James at $528 million now. Can you name the other two? Uh, Steph, is he? Steph is number three at $470 million. Michael Jordan. No. No, you're oh, talking he about wasn't active. Even close. I'm talking about who, oh. who has earned money through NBA contract money. In- NBA contract. Top earnings through NBA contract. Uh, come on, who? It's got to be someone who's currently playing. He, I'll, I'll give you a hint. He played with Steph Curry. Durant? It's Kevin Durant. Oh, yeah. Durant. Duh, okay. Duh. Yeah. Almost at $500 million. So those are your top three. And then it's pretty crazy. It goes Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, then Chris Paul. So, Wow, Bradley Beal. That's amazing. So I, I'd be kind of curious to talk to some of the other players with LeBron where – you know, if they don't have enough money to bring in all these other great players, you know, it's like LeBron and then kind of, I don't want to say everybody else because Anthony Davis is great too, but yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's like, guys, could you, LeBron, could you take just a little less so that we could pop, yeah. pop in and get some more players, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny how the whole thing works. Um, could you just imagine? Come on, Edward, so, uh, consider your company, man. I mean, it's all it's all capitalism. It's yeah. all about money. We'll, we'll, we'll get, you, get don't, you, don't, okay. you don't give you don't give back money. Okay. So even the, even the, even the ones even the ones that give their teams a a a local discount make that money back in some way. Well, 
So can do you guys know how it works in soccer at all? They do no. not have a salary cap. You can spend billions and billions and billions of dollars. It doesn't matter. You have an infinite cap. It doesn't matter. But teams will regularly go in and lose money, okay, because they spent so much money on a team. They acquired all the talent, and they still lose, okay? And then they're just suffocated by these contracts. But So if you're Messi, if you're – Ronaldo, I mean, you you bring in salaries that you know that have you know eight figures, whatnot. I mean, it's 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 hey, I've got him come out and see him play, and tickets are ridiculous for English Premier League. Exactly, but think about this though: if I'm an ownership group, I can spend infinite amounts of money, as much as money as we have, to field the best team possible, and that really drives the market. Okay. Sort of like live tour, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And then I was talking to some Brazilian soccer fans, and they were talking about their local clubs. Yeah. And they were saying, like, no, our team's going to be horrible for the next five years because we're bankrupt. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we actually filed for bankruptcy because we, we try to win the previous 10 years. Wow. It's crazy oh, wow. to think about. Okay, guys, we're going to cut to our first commercial break. We're talking about movies, tr football in the movies, okay? In which movie does Sean Penn crash the car – of his high school uh, star football player angering the latter so greatly that he nearly puts the entire opposing team in the hospital during the next game. All right. In Forrest well, Whitaker. Yeah, yeah that's Forrest right. Whitaker, that's, very, that's right. Forrest Whitaker. Right. That's very good. All right. That's our trivia question. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. It'll buff out. It'll buff out. McCauley. <laughs> Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman. Our first trivia question about football in the movies. In which movie does Sean Penn crash the car of his high school star football player, angering the latter so greatly that he nearly puts the entire opposing team in the hospital during their next game? Anybody? It's a movie the that will F.P. Have. Can go out and rent and watch. Yes. Just just from cult classic standpoint. Exactly. Purposes. Give us the answer, Vern. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Absolutely. Boy, there's a lot of The lady will there. have linguine and a clam sauce with a Coke. <laughs> great cult movie, great man. Great cult movie. Yes. I've never seen it. Yeah, every line in it is classic. Wait, hold on, every hold on. line FP, is classic. FP, go ahead. You've never I've seen never it. I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. It's very familiar. Okay. You know, it's funny. There's a lot of fake. You know, you got Ray Walston, my favorite Martian, uh, Sean Penn, um, yeah, 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 Edward, Judge Reinhold. My favorite Martian, FP. He's I not going to know that. Martian. Yeah, oh, really? really? No, that, yeah. That's okay, okay. all right. Wow. Yeah, I grew up on that. I watched it as a kid. That's a great movie. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe no, no, when wait, you're in the wait, kitchen, wait, wait. You're, you're, a TV you're, show. you're doing dishes, Ridgemont cooking thing. up something, just oh, open the laptop and then pull up fast uh, times at Ridgemont yeah, Bill, Bix, Bill Bixby and, uh, yeah, but and Ray Walsh. My favorite Martian, there, there's a Disney remake. Uh, it's a movie. Oh, yeah, talking. yeah, yeah. No, no. They but make sure that, make sure that you, you're watching during the Phoebe Cates uh, pool scene. So yeah, you, yeah, you, that's you the can, that's you the can be distracted. Yeah. At any other part of the movie, but you want to make sure you're watching the full. <laughs> I want to watch it with my fiance then. Yeah, well, well let's. Oh, uh, yeah, let's no. Clean. Um, well, the, what was the other thing that? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, speaking so of keep it clean. Yeah. Speaking of keep it clean. Yeah. How about the video from the Oakland Coliseum the other day? Oh yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> go ahead, explain to the audience because not many people go to the Oakland Coliseum. Yeah. Uh, 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 a couple of kids went to the very top of Mount Davis during an Oakland A's game and uh, spent a rather amorous time. Oh. The game. Which was, I would say that they're in their 30s, so yeah, some, <laughs> some kids, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they uh, they got caught doing uh, an act. Yes, which, uh, which is frowned upon to do at a public uh, venue like that. So, uh, of course, naturally, the next yeah, but they're just trying to add more fans to the fan base. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, it looks like trying to prevent having more fans of the fan base. Yeah. The way that I saw. It. <laughs> anyway, they were they were they were loyal fans. They probably have an only fans. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's I, I saw though that the the police department in Oakland is actually has a warrant for their arrest with a reward. They're not going to uh, find them. They're not. I don't think so. Yeah, the, pu the punishment if they arrest if they get arrested, the punishment is season's tickets to the rest yeah. of the A's. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Start inspired. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hey, um, just a, a real quick thing here. Uh, what do you think the future for Jimmy G is? So, according to Matt Mayoko yesterday in an interview I was listening to on the local radio station here at KMBR in San Francisco, a lot of people within the organization feel like he's going to be with the Seahawks, which I think yeah. is a huge dramatic twist. Think about I was it. In, I was in Minneapolis with the 49ers. Uh, Jimmy did not make that trip. And he, they're, they're, they're going to keep him on to, to, to the very last second, and then he will be cut. But what the team is probably hoping is that he'll be cut so late in the game that if anybody picks him up, it, it'll, it'll just delay him further to bring him up to speed on this other team's playbook, if it's Seattle, mm. to be able to even make a difference by the time, you know, the 49ers play him, which is what? September 18th, is that, that's, that's their, that's the 49ers season opener. Wow, so you, you think that. Or, or home, op home opener, home opener. <laughs> so you think the strategy is, is just to avoid having them uh, get them up to speed yeah. so that it doesn't affect your team. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, think Lynch is, I think Lynch is very lucky that he's in so good with Jed and with Shanahan because I think other GMs, might be fired for how badly this whole Jimmy Garoppolo thing yeah. has played out. It's one of the worst and most mishandled quarterback situations I've ever seen in my life. I would disagree with that, Russ, just because simply if Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't hurt, he would have been traded by then. I think it was just bad True. luck and bad timing. He didn't have that shoulder surgery. If they didn't see the, the slight drop tick of his arm strength towards the end of the season, I think everything's completely different. I think he's a Panther. I think it's a done deal. I think this moves smoothly, but you have so many questions in the NFL with injuries and especially shoulder injuries for an NFL guy or for a quarterback guy. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it was just bad luck and bad timing. So from a bad trade deal for a seventh round and, pick. And it would be uh, it would be a bad PR move to do anything with him now. I mean, he's, he's, he's in the hall of fame. So maybe if they go out in there, eight and nine or something like that, then, yeah, do something about it then. But you can't, can't do anything with Lynch now. I'm sorry, did you, did you say he's in the Hall of Fame? John Lynch. Lynch. Oh, John Lynch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So what what, what Lynch did you think we were talking about? No, I thought you were talking about Jimmy G, and I'm going, wait a minute. I thought so, too. <laughs> I thought so, too, for a second. I, mean, I missed the first part of that. My, my audio must have uh, gotten Russ is, Russ, is the one that, the, Russ is the one that said that John Lynch should be fired. Oh, God. I think yeah, he's yeah, lucky yeah. not to be. I think he's lucky not to be. Yeah. Okay. If, if uh, you look at Kyle Shanahan and the John Lynch era, if you look at their record, they're hovering around 500. Yeah. Yep. It's not, it's not yep. great compared to Sean McVay's. He, Sean McVay's way over 500 with his tenure in LA. And Kyle Shanahan, I think he, he might even be a little bit below 500. I could be wrong, but I know it's around 500. It's, it's very underwhelming. For My response to that before. results NFC Championship game, Super yep. Bowl appearance. Yep, that's true. Absolutely true. Mic drop. Happens. That happens. I agree. Uh, let's uh, think, moving on to a little baseball here. Albert Pujols on pace to hit 700 home runs. Man, what is with these home runs that are just flying out of the park off his bat? Juice, juice ball, juice bat. No, I, I don't know. Well, I, I have a little insight on this. Yeah. Uh, Major League Baseball gave a memo to all the, the coaches around Major League Baseball saying that they reduced the humidity on the humidifier, and all of a sudden – home run numbers are way, 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 way up again. So they changed it in the middle of the season. They admitted that they were wrong. It's not really being reported for some reason, but we're seeing a huge uptick in home runs. I think it's just wow. the biggest headache of all time that they're messing with the game so much that, like, that little adjustment is <laughs> resulting in huge outcome swings. Like, way different. Like, you're seeing home runs everywhere now in baseball. I mean – it, it's nuts. I mean, no, you said, guys, guys like Aaron Judge don't need the difference because they're so strong. Yeah. He's one of the few exceptions, of course. Yeah. But everybody else, I, I mean, you're seeing the, – the most egregious one was in Arizona. You know how the ball flies there. It's dry air. It's always hot, yada, yada, yada. It's always one of the top oh, right. home run hitting ballparks. It was at the very, very, very bottom for the first time in its park's history. And now it's starting to come back to the, to the middle because they overcorrected so much. Now, okay, I understand, uh, you know, a, a domed stadium. But what about just a regular open-air stadium? What, what are they 
doing there? So they, they, they wanted to do a humidifier, which is you put this baseball and adjust the moisture in the baseball and it makes it heavier, right? So ah. it adjusts how far the ball will actually travel. And they gotcha. wanted to keep it consistent across all sports because they thought, or all stadiums, because they thought if you kept it consistent, it'd be more fair. But I yeah. think the beauty of the game of baseball is knowing you're going into course field and you have to be careful because yeah. the ball is going to fly. Yeah. Right, or you go into this stadium or that stadium. It's what makes the game beautiful is the uniqueness and the personality of every single location you go to. Baseball wanted to just kill that for some reason and keep it even keel, and now they're really adjusting with the humidity in the baseball, and it's it's really really shady if you think about it because you can gotcha. really swing an outcome by putting in this these kinds of baseballs one inning and then these kinds of baseballs yeah. inning. It's like Deflate Gate. It's like Deflate Gate, but it's it's. Major League Baseball running it. It makes no sense. So yeah. guys are frustrated. Pitchers are frustrated now. Hitters are happy. But I think at the end of the day, we just want more scoring. I think that's what's best for did that Did that get leaked out? I don't know if it did. It, 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 Major League Baseball did a very good job of suppressing that information. But I know for an absolute fact that coaches got a memo saying, hey, we adjusted the humidifier for all stadiums. And we dialed it down because wow. averages were at an all-time low. Home yeah. runs are going to be a lower, not than they've ever been, but then it's they all have about this, baby. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, the, the, the chicks dig the long ball, right? Is yeah, I just don't understand why would they do it in the first place. It makes horrible business sense. Horrible business sense. Uh, I mean, you can even go back to the dead ball era where, you know, things were a little bit boring back then, and uh, so they had to, to change things. You yeah. Know, for that. Well, they got some guys that are really, really smart in the front office. I, I believe you, me. I mean, they're – they're looking at the numbers. They're looking at attendance. They're looking at the revenue. They're looking at everything, and they, and and they're looking at the, at the graph and like, uh, well, this year we did this. This year we did this. This year we're doing this, and and the numbers are are, are doing this. I so, and you know, you know, maybe the Yankees who have been plummeting lately, uh, and and, and the win loss record. I mean, they they. Those guys are smart. I mean, they're doing they're they're doing something to try and keep the game relevant from a revenue standpoint. All right, hey guys, we're going to get to our second commercial break here. We're talking uh, football in the movies. Now, this this one, once you know the name of the movie, you go, oh yeah, yeah, of, co of course. But you, I'm not sure if you remember the the names of the people. Okay, in which movie does Morris Chestnut play a character named Ricky Baker? a high school football player whose life is tragically cut short before he can go on to college where he is set to receive a scholarship. Kind of a, kind of a, kind of a tough way to ask this question. Because what's, 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 what's the kid's name? Ricky Baker is, is the name, uh, the, the, the actual uh, real human being. His name is Morris Chestnut, who I, I, who knows if you ever see him again, but he played a character named Ricky Baker. High school football player life is tragically cut short before he can go on to college where he is set to receive a scholarship. Stay with us. Sport, I'll give you some hints next time. Sports Econ 101, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time, I'm Edward Brown, along with Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman. Our second trivia question, uh, football in the movies, in which movie does Morris Chestnut play a character named Ricky Baker? a high school football player whose life is tragically cut short before he can go on to college where he is set to receive a scholarship. Vern, do you think you know the answer? Well, I can wager a guess. Uh, Friday Night Lights? No? Ah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll, give you, I, I'll give you some easy hints. Uh, Ice Cube and Cuba Gooding Jr. were in it. I don't know. Dun, 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 Ice Cube dun. and... <laughs> well, not, well, not, um, not, uh, um, yes, <laughs> yeah, not, not, not Jerry yes. Maguire. No, no, Jerry no, Maguire? no, no, uh, no, 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 Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood. I don't think of that as a football movie at all. I don't think of that as a football movie. That's not, that's not a football movie. Boys I, well, I know. I, I, it's, it's football in the movies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> football. In the movie, yeah. Okay. I mean, well, here, Fast Times at Ridgemont High is not a football movie either. No, <laughs> our first trivia question. That's true. 
And and the third one will be the same thing. It's not necessarily a football movie like you know the Gipper type of thing. You know, well, it's like when I tell people my favorite baseball movie is The Naked Gun. That <laughs> well, that is a great scene. Yeah, Frank Drebin, Joe Weston. Yep. It, it's got enough baseball people. It's a baseball movie, I think. Wait, wait, wait hold on. Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> wait, I, I've seen The Naked Gun, but I'm trying to remember where, where's the where's the baseball reference in that. He was an umpire in a scene. He's an umpire, and he's caught everybody. He's calling balls out. and strikes, and he's just so bad at it. Oh, yeah. the world's best rendition of the national anthem. Yeah, and then he—it's just—it's right. been so long since I've seen that movie. You know, gosh, we you did, do need to see it. Again. Didn't we just lose Leslie Nielsen last year? A few did, years did ago, yeah. A few years ago, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He was so. O.J. Simpson was sure in the uh, naked gun. O.J. Simpson, and so yeah, he was. Uh, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. No, you're thinking airplane. Oh, airplane. I'm airplane. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, gosh. But, but, you know, it's funny. But, yeah, because Naked Gun, Naked Gun 2, 33 or something, a third or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty funny. All right. Uh, moving on here. One more baseball thing I've got here. Tony La Russa. What's going on? Apparently, for the second time, uh, who knows if he's done it even more now, uh, walk a batter with a 1-2 count and two outs. And I think both times it's come back to bite him. Uh, is he losing it's it? It's his second childhood. It's his second childhood. Second? What do you mean? He's, he's so old now. He's oh, going yeah. back through his second childhood. You know, they say that about people when they get in their 80s. Hey, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to question Larusa. Uh, he's he's achieved get off my lawn status. And <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept a ride from to him. the movie Grand Torino. Yes, <laughs> right. I, I wouldn't accept a ride from Tony Larusa. Wanted to <laughs> drive me somewhere. So there's that. But I would let him take care of my dog. Yeah, he's he's a definitely a pet lover for sure. Yeah, um, he has, he owns the biggest shelter here, and I think in the Bay Area for for animals. So it's really really cool what he does here. Um, I agree with Vern. He's got get off my lawn power. Right, yeah, and so we get to to me, he gets a pass. Exactly, so. I think he gets a pass. I think it's sometimes it's more of like, hey, I'm the manager. I make the rules around here. Maybe he's trying to send a message. It's very old school, right? Like, hey, I'll do whatever I want. I'm the guy around here. So maybe he's trying to send a message to others on the team, or maybe it's coaching staff. Who knows? But I just talked to Tony when the White Sox were in town here in San Francisco. Mentally sharp as ever. Had a great conversation. Yeah. Good dude. Uh, Doesn't uh, call me Vernon. He calls me V. V. <laughs> I like that. Him, him, and Chris Mullen. They both call me V. 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 So you, got, you got a few different Tony. nicknames. You, you, you got uh, uh, Pee Wee from Willie Mays. Pee Wee right? from Mays. Yeah. Mays. Yep. You got V. Uh, yep. uh, Mister Involvement. Mr. Involvement. Does anybody yep. call yep. you that yep. anymore? Do, do you still get called that? Do you still oh, get all the time? Really? All the time. And, and for those who uh, don't I've, know, I've got, I've got a, I've got a stat, I've, I've got a TV stat that will, I don't know if it's going to shock you, but it might, it might surprise you. Think of the figure of the population. Think of the population of the entire Bay Area, okay, and, and including Oakland, San Jose, surrounding parts, San Francisco. Yeah. All right. Once you have that number in mind, five percent of the population of the Bay Area. Watch local TV news. It's pretty good. Five percent. What are the other ninety-five percent doing? Oh, they're streaming videos and they're got these. The phones. They yeah. uh, they they've cut their cable. They they they, yeah. they don't have a TV. Don't watch. I just got cable for the first time in my life last year as a young adult, and I work in television. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, FP. Let me there let me go. ask you. Let me ask you a question because you're right about this age. When did you get your driver's license? Uh, when I was 18, I was super late. Yeah, I, oh. you know what? Isn't that funny? Okay, at your generation, it seems like everybody just kind of like, yeah, 18, whatever. I couldn't uh, get a car, so I thought it was, it was stupid. I'm like, I couldn't get a car. I couldn't use anybody else's car. I'm not going to get it till I'm 18. And then Ed Ed Edward, my 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 21 year old middle son just got his license. I, I, wow. You know, it's funny. Now, Vern and Russell, you'll probably remember this. I tell you, on my 16th birthday, I was at the DMV to take my test. Yeah, and, and I again, got my, I wasn't, I, Not like I had a car, but I could. 15 years, eight months, I got my permit. Yeah. 16, 
had the license in my I, hand. Yeah, I mean, it, it represented freedom and and then you know you borrow mom, borrow dad's car and that sort yep. of thing. But I was I'll tell you where I was for my 16th birthday, which is I was watching the sunrise on the Mount of Masada in Israel. The, oh, wow. the, the dawn of my, my 16th birthday. <laughs> as soon as I got back to the United States, I got my license. And I got a driving job right away as a courier. So oh, okay. as soon as I had a license, I was working as a driver. Yeah, exactly. You know, did, so. you, did, you do, did you do birthright? No, no. no? This was with my uh, temple in uh, uh, Sheriff Israel. Oh. But uh, it, was, it just happened to be my, my the dawn of my my 16th birthday, where everybody else was lining up at the DMV, get their license. I was watching the sunrise. So I, I, got, I got a funny little story because you guys may not know this. So birthright is where if you're Jewish, Israel will basically, if I'm not mistaken, they'll basically pay for you to go to Israel. You just basically say, I'm Jewish. And they go, oh, great. Well, you know, please come to Israel. Like almost, almost yeah, it's a little time. bit more involved than that. But yeah, uh, but well, so here's the thing, my daughter, my daughter had uh, thought, oh, this is kind of neat, you know, get to travel and, and, and don't, uh, you know, have to pay much, if anything, right? And they, and they ask you, what kind of Jew are you? Think, you know, meaning, are you Orthodox? Orthodox or, reformed, or blah, 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 right? Reformed or, my, yeah, right. Tabby. My, are you my daughter, are tabby? My, wait, hold on. So my daughter writes Messianic Jew. And they stamp, no, absolutely not, yeah. which means a Messianic Jew is a, is a Jewish person who's accepted Jesus. So <laughs> uh, yeah, they said disqualify. Do a lot of studying. Wow. <laughs> uh, I, I I cracked up when I found out about that. Okay. Hey, Dennis Rodman to the rescue. What do you think? He's gonna go to. He's gonna bring Brittany Griner back. That's what he says. That's what he said. You know. I, I, hey, listen. A smuggler in a suitcase. So, yeah. Yeah. He's when he's tall enough. I mean, it's uh I don't know. It, 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 I mean, one would hope that it wouldn't, you know, backfire and make it worse for Brittany. Um, what are they going to do? I, I, Line I her up against the wall and shoot her? I mean, she's in there for nine years for a crime that normally is punishable yeah. by five years or less. So what, what more can they do, even if Rodman, you know, slam dunks the premiere over there? But wait, wait, hold, hold know, on, hold on. So in, in Russia, the normalcy for them would have been a five-year sentence for her? Let me yes. explain this to you. There was an instance just a year before of a 16-year-old girl that brought even more marijuana. Like, I think it was three times more than Brittany Griner. She was white, 16. We weren't in the Ukraine conflict at that point. Yeah. And she only got two weeks in jail and a 5,000 ruble fine, and she got sent back. Wow. Out of I don't know if it's a black-white uh, thing. I think it's more of the, the fact that well, just you well, just – bargaining chip power it is also a homosexual thing because russian oh yes. are anti, anti, yes. Yes. Anti yes, anti yes 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 and gotcha. britney yeah. griner is a, does identify as a lesbian yeah so this well, is well she's married she's yeah yeah she's got a wife yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I i yeah i think i think it's more that than it is the black one of course i don't know i right i'm still, i mean I'm all, a lot yes. of it has to do with putin being a total jerk true um, it's a chip in the Ukraine conflict, and honestly, it's just is one of the worst timings of all time. But no. I mean, honestly, guys, think about it. What if, what if World War Three starts because um, we send somebody over? We're to not sending him. He's just going to do it on his own. He's going to go on his own. And in fact, they, they, the U.S. Department said he's said they're 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 trying to nix it. Well, they're trying to say, listen, we are we we don't want him to do this. He's doing this yeah, all the time. But, Here, here's the here's the weird thing. You know what they. I'm not saying Brittany is innocent, but she could have been innocent. They could have just planted it on her too. And Easily. Yeah. Oh, I'm she admitted that she did. I, I know. I'm not going to start World War III, but yeah. after everything that's happened the past two, three years, nothing would surprise me at this yeah. point. Put it that way. Nothing that's absolutely true. would surprise me. And listen, the, what was it? The Archduke Ferdinand in 1914 gets shot and, and, in Austria, and boom, you boom. know, World War, World War I starts. I. And yep. then World War II starts in the same – Basically, the same vicinity, not on the same street, per se, but on the, in the same vicinity, Austria, Hungary. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. A couple of the, okay, so, uh, the, so what do you think about this transgender person trying to make it in the LGP, LPGA? I mean, I told you, it's going to happen. It's, they're going to start going into other sports. You know, you're going to start you, maybe soccer. 
you know, again, this is non-contact sports, but what happens in basketball, okay, same thing, basketball, but what happens when it gets to like, you know, boxing, MMA fighting or something like that? Are they going to put, do you think they're going to put a limit on it? I mean, apparently she said, she says that because of, of the hormone treatments and, and all that stuff, uh, she's driving the ball uh, 15, uh, 15 yards less. 15 yards less? Less is what she's saying that, you know, now that she's transitioned from a, a man to a woman, uh, she, you know, because of, of the therapy, you know, the hormone therapy. So I think guys, it, it's a very, very complex issue. First of delicate. all, delicate, very delicate, complex issue. But I think what's going to happen is they're going to start looking at when did you transition? Okay. Because people are starting yeah. to transition at a younger and younger age. Okay. Yeah. That's a whole nother issue. If you want to talk about it, this is, we're talking about sports here. So if you're, if you were naturally born male and you grew up to be 18 years old, right? You have all those uh, natural hormones mm -hmm. that you went through with puberty, right? Yep. But let's say like you transition when you're 15, you're not a fully developed man sure. at that point. Because it, isn't, didn't they do that in swimming at age, they said age 12, if you, Transition after age twelve—that that's it. No, you, you have to transition before age twelve. Then you yeah, I think for that exact reason. Yeah. And I I think yeah. that make I mean logically that makes sense. Okay, it does make sense because you you're you're born with all these hormones and it's injected into your system at that point, right? Naturally, you have the hormones of a man till that point, right? And your yeah. body is fully yeah. developed as a man. So you can't change your chromosomes. So that that part, you know, there's still gonna just, just how it is now. People, you know, they go through a lot of turmoil internally and, you know, you don't fully develop mentally until yeah, you're older. So. Yeah. These are really, really hard decisions to make. But I think that's the route we're going to start seeing just because from a, if you think about it from like a PED standpoint, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in the woman's realm, that, it's, it kind of makes sense. Okay. All right, guys. Third trivia question. In the 1994 film Forrest Gump, the title character has such exceptional running skills that he gets a scholarship playing football, college football. Which legendary coach does he play under? All right, stay with us. Sports Econ 101, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman. Our th third trivia question. In the 1994 film Forrest Gump, I can't believe it's been 28 years since that movie came out. Wow. Uh, the title character has such exceptional running skills that he gets a scholarship playing college football. Which legendary coach does he play under? Vern. That would be Paul Bear Bryant of the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's it. Remember, because he comes from Greenbow, Alabama. So, yeah, he played for Alabama. You guys talking about Forrest Gump? Yep. Forrest yep. Gump. That's it. Great movie. Yeah. By the way, did you know not only is Tom Hanks an Oakland native, he attended – and graduated from Skyline High School. Yep. Wow. You get some get some we got some Bay Area people here. Like That's Tom right. Brady from Sarah. All right? Yep. Sam Mateo. Right. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, are you ready for our thoughts for the day? Go, Daddy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Why is the Irish economy so strong? Because the population is Dublin all the time. Uh, well, close. Because, oh, that's, a good, capital, that's a good one. Because its capital is always Dublin. Very good, Russell. Oh, uh, okay. That's another layer. Okay. Cap. And how does Bigfoot know what time it is? By looking at his Sasquatch. Sasquatch. <laughs> that yeah, was pretty bad. Joke. All right, and with that bad uh, daddy humor, tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We'll be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll Good see night, you next America. week. So long.